Howdy everybody, David here, and this is another Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Class Creation Continuation. And in this video, we are taking Gargok the Destroyer, our level 10 half-orc barbarian. And in this video, we will level him from levels 11 to level 15. Now let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing I do is, as I'm leveling my character every level, I like to level him systematically like I've done in the prior videos. So we will go ahead and start at the top, go to a level 11 barbarian. The level 11 XP value is 85,000. Then we need to raise Gargok's hit points. Gargok has 105 and like I've done in the other videos, I'm taking the static 7 that you can take for the Barbarian. Now, your Dungeon Master, he or she, can give you the choice of rolling or taking the flat 7. Myself, I like to take the flat 7 because I'm too scared to roll a 1d12. Because of my luck, I'll have a level 20 Barbarian with about 50 hit points. So, uh, I've decided to go ahead and take the flat 7. So, the Barbarian gets the 7, plus your Constitution modifier. My Con modifier, as you can see, is a plus 3. So, I'll get 10 more hit points around. So, at level 11, I'll have 115 hit points. Pretty nice hit point pool. I'll now have 11 out of combat hit dice heals, which you can use uh, during a short rest. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, our proficiency which our proficiency does stay the same at plus four at level eleven then for rages which is basically the main uh, class feature for the barbarian you will stay at a total of four rages which you can see we have four rages here for how many times a day we can rage and our bonus damage will still stay at a plus three so we're good to go there now the only thing that we're really going to get at level 11 for Gargok is a class feature. Now, this is going to be uh, Relentless Rage. And Relentless Rage, uh, basically, this is where you you know your rage can keep you fighting despite grievous wounds. And if you drop to zero hit points while you are raging and you do not die outright, uh, then you can make a DC 10 Constitution saving throw. Now, if you are successful with that DC 10 Constitution saving throw, you can drop the one hit point instead of going unconscious at zero. Now, each time that you use Relentless Rage there after DC 10, the DC will increase by increments of five. So the second time will be DC 15 Constitution, and third time will be DC 20. So as you can see, the more that you use Relentless Rage before uh, before you get a rest, you get which actually is really nice. It takes a short or a long rest, then you know uh, it's going to get harder for you to use Relentless Rage. So that's pretty much what we have uh, for level 11, and you can see that uh, I've already added that here to the sheet. Now I like to keep all of my class features here. Unfortunately, it's a, it is a very small text, but uh, it is still organized with all of our Path of the Totem Warrior features down below our primary uh, Barbarian features. So it looks like we're done with level 11. Uh, there's no other changes. So let's go ahead and go to level 12 now. Now, level 12, we'll go ahead and raise our Barbarian to level 12. Now for EXP, well for XP, you'll need 100,000, which is a pretty nice chunk. Now see that we've got that, we're just going to start working everything down again. So we'll start with hit points again, we'll take another 10 hit points, so we will go to 125 hit points. Let's check our rages. Now, uh, I, I know that this may seem redundant, but it does serve a purpose. It gets you into training yourself while you're making your characters to really systematically go over every single thing that your class could get. I can't tell you how many times I've seen players short their characters, whether it be forgetting to add proficiency in your saving throws or your skill checks or even your attack. Or you know, it, it can be anything, or forgetting to add class features, or not knowing uh, a certain racial, you know, feature like the savage attack for the the orc. So there's a lot of things. So you really need to systematically, uh, you know, set up a step-by-step -step process for yourself, whatever's easiest for you, to get this done. Now for level 12, 
Uh, like I said, our proficiency is staying the same. Uh, our rages do go up to five a day now. So I will change from four times a day to five times a day, which is really nice. Next, uh, it looks like our level 12 rage damage is going to stay the same at plus three, so we will not change that. And the only other class feature that we're going to get uh, is a, an ability score improvement. So we'll get an ASI, basically. So uh, for level 12, let's go ahead and get that on there. And we'll just call it ASI, like, like I've done with the other ones. Now, I, I definitely want to pump up my dexterity more. Now, we're going to take the dex from 16 to 18, which in turn is going to give us another ability modifier increase. So our dex is going to go to 18. That's going to do a couple things for us. First off, we're going to go ahead and systematically do this to where starting at the top it's going to affect definitely going to infect our initiative so it, we're going to plus four next don't forget your level one unarmored defense is a base of ten plus your dex plus your con so now that we have a sixteen we're going to actually seventeen for armor class so for wearing no armor having a seventeen armor class is pretty nice so it, like i said it's ten plus your dex modifier plus your constitution modifier, and we will eventually take our dexterity to a 20 to get an 18. Uh, we may even take our constitution 18, uh, but that will be later down the line. Now, see that we've got, seeing that we've got our initiative done, we, our unarmored bonus done, uh, let's go ahead and look at and raise our saving throw to plus, uh, let's, we're going to plus four now for our dexterity saving throw. Uh, then after that we are going to raise up all of our different ability uh, ability skill checks. They'll all be at plus four. But they could go higher depending if we are proficient in it. But I do not believe that we have any dexterity based skills that we're proficient in. So uh, that probably will not be the case here, which it is not. So we've got all three of our dexterity checks raised up to plus four and let's see that's about it doesn't affect uh, dexterity doesn't affect any of our to hit because we're all based off of strength so there you go that is pretty much going to be it for level 12 now let's go ahead and go to level 13 and level 13 is a total of 120,000 exp getting up there now let's go ahead and raise our hit points up again uh, we're going to go to 135 HP, add our 7 plus our con, and we're going to be at 13 total. 13 total now. We forgot to add in the one from last level, which is not a problem. Uh, so we're done with the hit points. Now let's go ahead and check out uh, whatever we get for proficiency and whatnot. Uh, so level 13, there's going to be absolutely uh, no change for your rages or your rage damage. Last level we went to five rages a day. Uh, but however, uh, at level 13, you will gain a proficiency bonus. Now, uh, at level 13, your proficiency bonus uh, does go to a plus five. So now this is going to affect several things like we've already changed before. This will affect everything that has to do with the proficiency notifications. Basically strength and constitution. We're going to be at 10. 5 from our proficiency. 5 from strength. So we definitely have a 10. Our constitution modifier is a 3 plus the 5. So we'll add the one other to take us to 8. Now we are also going to take care of any other proficiencies in our skill check. So everything that does have, you know, the that we are proficient in, all of the black marks we will raise by one. So that will take it to 10 for athletics, which is really strong. Four for uh, charisma. Four for me uh, medicine. Even though we are proficient, remember, we are minus one for our modifiers for intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. So that's why they're only plus four.
religion the same thing plus four and finally survival at plus four so now we're taken care of with our universal proficiency bonus for saving throws and also skill checks so the next thing that it's going to affect is our to hit bonus for our weapons we are proficient in all of these weapons so we will go ahead and raise them all up by one and just like the other two proficiency upgrades that we got at 5 and 9, we do not add our proficiency bonus to our damage. So uh, if you are, if you've added it to a character in the past, you do not do that. You only add to the attack bonus for that weapon. Now, seeing that we don't have any spells, we don't have to worry about our, our spell cast modifier for attack and DC, so we're good to go there. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at uh, level 13. We will get an upgrade to Brutal Critical. So, at level 13... All right, level 13. Brutal Critical Upgrade. Okay, now what Brutal Critical does is it adds the extra die onto your roll. Well, level 13, uh, it does give you two additional rolls. So, you know, basically it works like this. When we crit with a Great Axe, it's 1d12 plus the bonus for critting is 2d12. Now, don't forget, we have Savage Attacks for our Orc Racial. That adds another weapon die on top of that. So, with the base crit and racial is 3d12. Now, Brutal Critical gets even more vicious. We get to add an additional 2d12. So when we're critting now, we're literally critting for 5d12 plus our plus our 6, and if we're raging, it even goes to plus 9. So Brutal Critical is really vicious, and it's even going to get higher later on down the line at level 17. So we'll have a total of 60 12. Man, that is so crazy. So that's pretty much everything at level 13 for good old Gargok the Destroyer. Now we're going to go ahead and go to level 14 now, which XP for level 14 is 140k now. Same thing with the hit points. We're going to raise it 10 more. 7 plus our con, which is 3, which is going to take it to uh, 145. Now, next, let's go ahead and check our proficiency. We won't get one at level 14. It's still going to stay at plus 5 because it went up last level at 14. Uh, also, uh, at level 14, we're going to check our rages. And our rages, we still stay at 5. We do not gain any more. And we still stay at a plus three bonus, so nothing there is going to change either. Now, for level 14, we are going to get uh, our path feature. And this should be our last path feature, uh, which uh, we are path of the totem warrior. So at level 14, you will get uh, totemic attunement. And this is where you gain a magical benefit based on your spirit animal that you have chosen. Now, you can choose the same animal, which we've chosen bear, at level 6 and level 3. So we are going to continue to choose the bear spirit at level 14. And the bear spirit, uh, this is where you can choose, you know, like I said, we're choosing the same. And the bear is going to be, while you're raging, any creature within five feet of you that's hostile to you has disadvantage on attack rolls against targets other than you or another character with this feature. Sort of works like a fourth edition taunt or a mark. Now, that all that means is uh, if, a, if a creature is engaged with you, it will not get disadvantage. But the first time that it switches targets to someone else beside you, that's when it's the creature that is attacking you has now attacking someone else, and it will get disadvantage. And also, an enemy is immune to this effect if it cannot see or hear you, or if it can't... And or if it can't be frightened. So, an enemy is immune to this effect if it is, if it cannot see you or hear you or if it cannot be frightened. Okay, gotcha. So that's pretty much straightforward. 
Now we're going to go ahead and add this class feature to the bottom here uh, at level 14. So we're going to go ahead and just add this in to keep it nice and organized. And this is a uh, totemic attunement at level 14. Very nice feature. You know, and the thing is, is and once they're attacking you, any damage that they do to you, you're still while you're raging, you're only taking half of it because of the resistance that you have for raging. So th that really makes it nice. All right, so there it is. While raging, any creature that's hostile within five feet of you has disadvantage while attacking any creature other than you. There it is. All right. So that's pretty much going to be it for level 14. Let's go ahead and look at level 15, which will be the final level for this part of the tutorial. And let's go ahead and raise uh, old Gargak up. Man, he's getting up there in levels, isn't he? Level 15. Uh, as you can see, level 15 experience is 165,000 EXP now. Gargox is going to get another 10 hit points, so we'll be at 155, uh, 155, and also he'll be at uh, 15 instead of 13. I keep forgetting to add these hit dies down here. That's such a small little number, but uh, now Gargox is up to 15 uh, out of combat heals and which is nice when you get a short rest you can do that all right so now that we've got our hit points we've got uh we haven't forgotten about our, our hit dice there uh at level 15 your proficiency is still going to stay the same so that's not going to change your rages are going to stay the same at five and your damage bonus is definitely going to stay the same at plus three so the only thing that you are going to get for the Barbarian at level 15 uh, is the class feature, and this is baseline for the Barbarian, and it is going to be called Persistent Rage. Now, Persistent Rage is this. This is where your rage is so fierce that it ends early only if you fall unconscious or if you choose to end it. Just like it says, your rage is so fierce that it ends early only if you choose to end it or you fall unconscious. So the timer for rage out the window now. You can only end it, you know, and you know, it, there's a little bit of gray area there because sometimes a, a DM will say, "Oh, you're not raging anymore now that combat is over." But technically by the rules, persistent rage, uh you can end rage only if you fall unconscious or uh, if you choose to end it. So there could be a little bit of debate there for some gray because it really wasn't uh, fully uh, really fully explained. Okay, so let's go ahead and add this uh, to our list of class features and you can see every level, man, the Barbarian gets something really good. So level 15, Persistent Rage. Really nice, uh, really nice feature actually. I mean, it just keeps stacking on, on top of everything else that uh, you're getting. All right. All right. So your rage only ends if you fall unconscious or if you choose to end it. There you go. Level fifteen. That looks like we are done. So it's actually. Gargok is, is almost complete. We'll have one more video after this. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Gargok is uh, getting pretty strong, as you can see. So if you guys have any uh, comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you'd like to try Gargok the Destroyer or any of the other Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition character sheets that I've created uh, and the community, there's 840 of them on my website at tabletopping.net. There's a link down below. Feel free to try one, try all of them. And hey, I appreciate it, everyone. They're on these nice three-page PDF formats. You can put them on your iPhone, your tablet. You can print them out. You can do whatever you want. So thank you guys again, and I'll see you next time.